All right, everyone, homework last night was uh, worksheet number eight, among other things. Uh, worksheet number eight is going up on the board here right now. Have a peek at the answers for questions one to five. And we'll scroll down and see what the answers are for the rest of them as well. You can let me know at the end of it which questions you need gone over, if any. Six and seven are up there now. Next two questions, eight and nine. Number 10 up on the board now. And finally, questions 11 and 12 up on the board here right now. First question we'll go over here is number seven. Uh, calculate the magnitude of the net force experienced by an electron if the electric field experienced is 1.00 times 10 to the 3. You know what? Uh, I'm going to underline or circle the word electron there, even though in this case I'm not going to need the charge here, or at least I'm not going to need the sign of the charge. I'm going to circle it anyways because I want to be in the habit, every time I see the word electron or something that's negatively charged, drawing attention to that. Because when I do need the sign of the charge, okay, when I do need to know what type of charge it is, um, we really want to distinguish an electron from a proton or alpha particle or something like that. Okay, we're talking about the, the force experienced, okay, the electric field experienced. Clearly, I think in this case, we're looking at an experiencer. Right? We have three equations that we're allowed to use in electric field problems. There's the kq over r squared, there's the f over q, and there's the, the new one that we learned last week, delta V over delta D, the potential difference divided by the distance. We've got our, our green circle within our Venn diagram. Sorry, our red one. Mr. Van Der would have called that first one green. Um, then we've got our green circle within the Venn diagram here. And both of them show something different, right? The first red circle shows us the equations that are valid when we have a non-uniform field. In other words, we have a field that is caused by a point source. Maybe it's a, a positive point source. Maybe it's a negative point source. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is it produces a non-uniform field. The second one, the red group, we're allowed to use whenever we have either charged parallel plates. Usually I make the top one positive. This time I'm going to go backwards, right? Field goes from positive to negative, whether it's, doesn't matter which way this, these plates are oriented. Um, this is a uniform field. Okay? It's either parallel plates like the bumper cars, two metal parallel plates, okay, the top plate and the bottom plate, each charged oppositely, or it can be something that's, that's like charged plates, like the cloud and the ground just before lightning strikes. Or the, the ground just before the lightning strike becomes positive, okay, and, they, uh, and the cloud just before the lightning strike becomes negative. The electric field will point upwards in that case. More or less a uniform field. Now, in this case, we don't know whether we have a uniform or non-uniform field. We're just told that we want to find the electric force experienced. And we're allowed to find the electric force experienced on by an electron or by anything else in a uniform or a non-uniform field using that equation that's in the middle. Sometimes I call it the universal field equation because we're allowed to use it anytime as long as we have an experiencer experiencing the field. So let's use that one. Let's use that one since we do have information about the experiencer here. We'll say E is equal to F over Q. We're going to rearrange that to solve for force. It's Q times E. We got the charge. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. It's actually negative, but we're going to make it positive because we always drop the sign of the charge in an equation. And the electric field, of course, is 100 or 1.00, I should say, times 10 to the 3. And we multiply those together, we get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons would be my answer. What would we do at this point if we were asked to find acceleration? Which we often are at this point. What do you do in physics 30 any time you're asked to find acceleration? Not just this question, but any question. Don't worry, Stephen, I won't call on you. I've got a mouthful of apples right now. Ben, what, I, what would I do to find acceleration? 
given the force. Absolutely. Every time in physics 30 you want to find acceleration, you should at least try F equals MA first. Okay, there might be that 1% of the time when it doesn't work, you've got to try something else, but it's always valid. You're never going to go wrong with that equation, and 99% of the time, it's going to get you the answer. 1% of the time, maybe you've got to go back to kinematics and use VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD or something like that. But you're always going to try F equals MA when you're looking for acceleration. So you weren't asked that here, but I think in, in uh, later questions you were asked that a couple times. All right, next one we need to go over was number eight. Uh, number eight, actually, let's, uh, if we do number nine, does that take, will that take care of number eight? Who asked for number eight? Okay, do you have, did you have issues with number nine as well? Let's, uh, let's actually skip number eight and go to number nine because it's, uh, it takes care of number eight and then some. And if we still have trouble with number eight, somebody can let me know, and we'll go over that one as well. Number nine says three charges are in a straight row. Three charges in a straight row. First time we've dealt with three charges in the context of electric fields. The first one is, we'll call it number one, 2.50 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs. The second one, at negative 4.00 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs. And the third one is positive 3.00 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs. Let's label the distances here. These guys are 60 millimeters apart. Make sure you pay attention to those units, millimeters. Then we've got 5 centimeters. And then we have, a, we have a, a field strength right here, 2 centimeters to the right of the third charge. So there's my diagram. For the first time ever, we're solving a problem involving electric fields and three charges. It's not harder. It's just more work. If you don't know what to do, then there's more that you don't know what to do for. But if you know what to do, just, just, just do the same thing. We're going to draw the fields at point X as a result of 1, 2, and 3. Pretend 2 and 3 aren't there. Um, which way, Reese? is the electric field point at X as a result of charge 1. Charge 1 that's positive, which way does the field go? Good. It goes away from it, so it goes to the right. We'll call this E1. We'll make it green. The E2 is going to be red. Which way does the electric field point as a result of number 2? It's a negative. Aisha, which way does that one go? Left or right? Good. It points toward the negative producer. Okay, or, in other words, to the left. E2, we to the left. What about number three? It's positive. Which way is the field uh, lane going to point as a result of that positive charge? Good. So E3 will be drawn to the right here. Let's calculate each of these fields here now. E1 is KQ1 over R squared. This is what you got to be careful of right here. The value of R. You got to be careful of it on two fronts. A, you got strange units here. In fact, different strange units, millimeters, centimeters, centimeters. You got to be careful of resolving those units. But you've also got to be careful that you add those numbers up. Six centimeters plus five centimeters plus two centimeters gives me 0 0.13 meters. We do that, we get 1.322, sorry, 1.3299 times 10 to the 10. We do the second one, same idea, but this time the charge is different and R is different. We're dropping the sign of the charge there because we always do. This time the distance is going to be 7 centimeters or 0 0.07 meters. We can do the math on that one. And it's 7.3388 times 10 to the 10. And finally, the third one, the last one. Uh, Q is 3 times 10 to the minus 2. This is the easiest one because the distance is, uh, is given to us. We don't have to... Um, add anything together. 
We get that number and it's 6.7425. 6.7425 times 10 to the 11. Now we've got to add these up, right? But when we add them up, Sarah, when we add them up, we've got to be careful to do what? Good. Which one should be negative? Good. So this one is positive. This one is positive. This one is negative. Add them up, making sure that one is negative. We end up getting 6.14 times 10 to the 11 newtons per coulomb to the right. Hey, if we get, uh, we get an answer of 6.1 times 10 to the 11 newtons per coulomb, let's say you were asked to express that as B times 10 to the W. What's the value of B? What would we fill that in as? Nick, what would we fill that in as? Good. 6.1, including the decimal place, right? If we were asked to fill that in as A decimal B times 10 to the CD, both of these are fairly common, right? We'd fill that in as what? Luke would fill that in as what? It's amazing how many people will make a mistake on just filling it in. If it's a unit test, I can see that you've just made that silly mistake. But if it's a diploma exam, you just lost 2% of your diploma exam mark because you filled it in wrong. 2% of your diploma exam mark, 1% of physics 30 because you filled it in wrong. So we want to make sure that we can fill those in properly, right? All right, the next question that we had to go over, the last one here was number 12. An electron sits between two parallel, two charged parallel plates 10 centimeters apart. The field strength is this value. What's the potential difference across the plate? We have those three equations, right? Through the Venn diagram, the top one was red, or I think we said it was green for Mr. Van der Erf. The bottom one was green for all of us. Okay, the top two were when we had a non-uniform field, like this. And then the bottom two where we have a uniform field, the parallel plates, like this. Which two equations are valid in this problem? One and two, or two and three? What kind of field do we have here between these two plates? Oliver, which one do we have? Red ones, green ones? Yeah. Yeah, we've got parallel plates, so we can use those green equations, which we go back to the actual equations somewhere. I don't know where they went. Anyways, if we go back to the original equations, the ones we're allowed to use are the experiencer equation, f over q, but also delta v over delta d. Let's try the last one in this case. E is equal to delta V over delta D. We're looking for delta V, the potential difference, which we said on Friday was related to the, the, the energy difference between the plates. Make sure you make that distance in meters, 0 0.10 meters. Uh, 2.50 times 10 to the 2 volts. 250 volts. All right. Good enough. Now, you want to find the force now. I suspect that pretty much everybody got question A, right? Just about, at least. This is where people start struggling a little bit. What's the magnitude of the force? Well, remember, we're using the green equations here, and we still haven't used one of them. We still haven't used the experiencer equation, E is equal to alpha over Q. The field experienced by the electron right here, is the same as the field that was produced by the two plates. So all we're going to do here is multiply the charge of the electron by the electric field, which is 2,500. Uh, what does that give me when I do the math on that one? 2.4? No, I don't know. Uh, 4.00 times 10 to the minus 16. All right. Yeah. No, 
that's okay. 250 would be fine. Yeah. Well, actually, for A, it's... Uh, yeah, but it's 250. That's right. No, 250 would, be, would absolutely be fine. Um, just be careful on, a, on an exam. You'll be asked to either put it in standard notation or scientific. So be able to do both. Okay. Even though, you know, on a question like this, if it doesn't specify, just do whatever works for you. They're both the right number of digits, right? Um, another question? Yep. Okay. 2,500 was the, should be, should be 250 actually though, shouldn't it? No, no, it should be 20, no, it should be 2,500, yeah. The number given to me in the question up here, right? And finally, the acceleration. We talked about this earlier, right? What do we always do? Jace, what do we always do in Physics 30 when we're asked to find acceleration? I think Ben gave it to me before, wasn't it? Yes? Jace, you're up this time. Good. A is equal to F over M. 99% of the time, that's going to work for us. If it doesn't, then try something else. Uh, be careful. It's an electron, so we use the mass of the electron. Um, when it's an electron, we usually put in the right number. If it's an alpha particle or a proton, sometimes we'll get that mixed up with an electron and put the electron's mass in there. So be careful of that. Uh, it gives us 4.39 times 10 to the 14. That's a big, big acceleration. The fastest speed we can have is 10 to the 8. But there's no upper limit on acceleration. It just means that you'll reach the fastest speed real, real quick. That's all. We also had some questions to do on page 569, number 2, 4, 6, and 9. Any issues with uh, any of those four questions, please? Were those just easy? Nine's the same as what we just did, right? A, a few minutes ago with that, that three charges, except a little bit easier. Careful with uh, these. We haven't seen that too many times. Um, sorry, no, we have actually that one. That's 10 to the minus 6. Number four, Kathleen, do they hear? Okay. Any others? Okay, number four it is. It says that at a point in the Earth's atmosphere, the electric field is 150 newtons per coulomb downward. Gravity is 9.8 downward. So here's the Earth. The atmosphere is up here. At this point in the atmosphere, the electric field is 150 newtons per coulomb. The gravitational field is 9.80, as opposed to 9.81, which it usually is. Let's find the electric force on a proton, and let's find the gravitational force on a proton. Before we do that, I want everybody right now to make a prediction. Just to yourself, I want you to predict whether you think the electric force will be bigger or the gravitational force will be bigger. And I want you to identify in your own mind why. Anybody want to share their prediction? Pick which one do you think is going to be bigger? Okay. Hey, electric force is going to be bigger. Anybody say gravity bigger? All right, well, let's check. This proton at that point is experiencing an electric field. Let's use the experiencer equation. Let's rearrange it. Charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and the electric field strength is 150. That gives me 2.4 times 10 to the minus 17, I think. All right, electric force. Now it's the moment of truth. Is gravity bigger or smaller? The gravitational field is F over M, or the force is M times G. 
the mass of a proton is on your data sheet. Now, I'm not sure what that works out to be. It's somewhere around 1.6 times 10 to the minus 26. Dramatically smaller, as Jake suggested, than the, than the electric force, right? All other things being equal, the electric force will almost always be bigger than the gravitational force, right? Almost the very first day of this unit, we talked about that. So it's a nice little check for us. Is it bigger? Yeah. Should be bigger. Right. I'd like you to open up your worksheet booklets here to a couple multiple choice questions that I'm going to have you work on right now 47 and 48. But before you start those, I want to talk just a little bit about this, this diagram that goes with those two questions. This diagram was given on a diploma exam, believe it or not, in 2002. So it's 12 years old. In 2002, our, our curriculum required us to know about something called transformers. That's not the main point of this question, but it is mentioned in the question. Right? It's, it's referred to in the question. We don't have to know about transformers now. Does that mean we can never see a question involving transformers? No, it doesn't mean that at all. We could. But if we did, they'd give us a little bit more background than they give us here. So what I want to do right now is give you that background that they would have to give us if they put out that on an exam now versus an exam in 2002. Basically, without going into too much detail on it, a transformer changes a voltage from a low value to a high value or a, low, or a high value to a low value. Here, we've got 12 volts on what we call the primary side going into the transformer. And then we have on the secondary side, we call it, we have a potential difference, tells us here, of 20,000 volts on the secondary side. It's 20,000 volts on the secondary side that jumps across the spark plug. Again, if you had learned about transformers, you would know that. If you saw a question like this on a diploma exam this year, they would explain that, just like I have. All right, knowing, knowing that, I'd like you to take a look at these two questions, 47 and 48. You're going to submit those as multiple choice number one and numerical response number one, both on the same submission, please. So do them both together, submit them both at the same time. All right, let's get at it. All right, take a look here, guys. Um, Question number 47 asks us for the strength of the electric field induced in the gap of the spark plug. Now, we have, uh, we have two potential differences. We have a 20,000 volt and we have a 12 volt. But the one that we're concerned with is the, is the uh, potential difference in the secondary coil, the 20,000 volts. And we're going to divide that by the distance of 2 millimeters. So it's going to be 20,000 volts divided by 0 0.002 meters. And that gives us... V1.0 times 10 to the 7 is warm. Now, some of you may have in the back of your mind been thinking, uh, why is this equation E is equal to delta V over delta V valid? Some of you may not have been thinking that. That's okay. When we look at the spark plug wire, there's an electrode here and there's an electrode here. Well, how do we know if it's a, how do we know that that's a uniform field? The reality is, when we look at parallel plates, Let's say the top is positive, the bottom is negative. The electric field directly between the plates is uniform. At the edges, we get what's called edge effects. So it kind of goes out like this. But we're only looking directly between the parallel plates when we're using that equation, delta V over delta V. If we look at two electrodes, which are just about point sources, then the field would look more like this, right? Assuming the top one is positive and the bottom one is negative. Well, that doesn't look like a uniform field at all. But if we look at right smack in the middle here, right between those two electrodes, we could consider that spot to be a uniform field. Okay, once we go out from that at all, then we get what's, what's like the edge effects of the parallel plate. See, that wouldn't work. That equation is equal to delta V over delta V wouldn't work over here. But it is okay to use it directly between. Okay, does that make sense? 
It's like a uniform field directly between them. Just not as wide of a uniform field, that's all. Okay, you guys didn't have too much trouble with that because you all get the right answer for it. 48, on the other hand, we didn't all get the right answer for it. What's the acceleration of the electrodes? Listen, what do we got to do every single time when we want to find acceleration in physics 30? Ben, every single time we want to find acceleration, we want to get the what? Good. Force divided by mass. So we got to get the mass, sorry, the force first. Okay, let's get the force. We have the field. Okay, if we have the field and we have the charge, then we can find the force. It's an electron, so it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times the field that we just found. That gives us 1.6 times 10 to the minus 12 newtons. Now we're going to use that equation that we learned way back in October of physics 20, F over M. Good. Uh, the answer we get there, I think, was 1.8 times 10 to the 18. Does that ring a bell? Yes. And if we're asked to express that A decimal B times 10 to the CD, we'd write it as 1818. If it was B times 10 to the W, it would be 1.8. Good there? All right.